This video is sponsored by Avail. Are you a HGV driver looking for a job? If so, then create and log into the Avail app and start looking for work. Want to know more? Then download the Avail app today. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my channel. My name is Luke. Thank you very much for watching. Do appreciate it. We are in Bristol, Bristol city centre. We've got to go straight through it because, um, well, we've got to go to a B&Q store and it just so happens to be pretty much straight through B, um, straight through Bristol to get there. We're going to B&Q. We can do it when you're B&Q it. Is that still the tagline? I've got no idea. <laughs> um, yes, we are, um, we're going through Bristol city centre to get to B&Q. Um, I've actually, where we're going, I've been to quite a few times. Um, have I delivered to the b and I can't remember. It's a big, um, it's like a complex of, of like shops. One of which um, is a place I'm banned from. <laughs> um, but I have delivered there. Uh, shout out to the range. Nice. Hope you're watching. <laughs> uh, but we're not delivering to the range. We're going past the range and delivering to B&Q. Um, Yes, uh, we got this loaded yesterday from Ashbourne. It's a place where, I don't know whether any of you watch Trucker Andy, um, or used to, I don't know whether he's still up, I don't think he uploads anymore, but he used to. And it's a, it's a place where he gets loaded from an awful lot. I actually met him there, not yesterday, the day before, Monday. Today's Wednesday. And um, I was there again yesterday to get loaded. Um, so yeah, it's uh, one of those places where I've only been there twice, but both occasions I've been there for hours waiting to be loaded, so not the quickest. But we've got, uh, it's aggregate industries, and essentially it's like paving blocks. Garden, garden wear is basically what I got on the trailer. I will show you once we get to our delivery point. I'll show you the load we got on. It's a full load, and uh, we weigh, I think when I got on the weigh bridge yesterday, I was like 38 tonnes, so we're not technically fully loaded in terms of weight. But the trailer is full. The trailer is full. Now, a little bit of a favour to ask you. So anyone who's watching this, there's like a good, a good 50, 55% of you who watch my content who are not subscribed to the channel. Please, just hit the subscribe button down below. It doesn't cost you a penny. Helps me out massively. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subs. Uh, it'd be nice if I can get to that figure this year. I don't think it will happen. But if we could, <laughs> that would be amazing and that would be like an achievement for me on uh, on YouTube so if you haven't done so please hit that subscribe button down below I think it's down below um, doesn't cost you anything it takes you a couple of seconds if anything and but it helps me out a massive amount so please please go and hit that subscribe button but yes we are driving through Bristol city centre um, we're only 4.5 miles away uh, the sat nav saying we're a good 20 minutes away though, so I'm gonna go through some. Uh, I think, oh, I thought we went for a red light then. <laughs> we got <laughs> it's a taxi lane, um, but yeah, no, we've got to go through the center, so let's get a move on. I just had a van sort of not overtake me, but he turned right at the traffic lights and he, he was he looked very heavy, like his back wheels were quite squashed and he was struggling to pull away. Um, I think he was overloaded because I can smell clutch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think he might have been overloaded somewhat. Right, we're only a mile and a half away and that's on the assumption we've got to go down to the roundabout and turn around. We might be able to turn right. I'm not actually sure. Go over, we've got to go over this first roundabout and then we can either turn right or we've got to go up to the roundabout, turn around and come back and then turn left. I'm not sure. We will find out. Okay, show over this roundabout. I'm hoping no one cuts lanes. Like that. Luckily, I... Uh, sort of predicted that was going to happen. Right, I need to get into the right-hand side of the lane just in case we can turn right. I have a suspicion that we can. Satanav doesn't think we can. Satanav is saying go all the way down to the bottom and turn around and come back. But I think we can turn right here. No, we can't. Okay. Uh, uh, we'll stay in this lane because the roundabout's just here, look. 
Oh, I remember now. Yes, I remember this place. Yes, yes, yes. It's a slip road. Like I said, I've definitely been here before when I've delivered for the range. Yeah, 100% I've been here before. I was contemplating coming down here and staying here for the night, um, but in the end I decided to stay in Tewkesbury. And um, then it was about an hour's drive here then this morning. I should probably say as well, um, actually it was about an hour and 20 minutes actually. It's eight o'clock, bang on eight o'clock, which is fine. That is the time I was recommended I get here for. Paperwork says 12 o'clock. But another driver told me not to turn up before eight. And I'm pretty sure B&Q will sometimes fine the company if you don't turn up on time, so, or if you turn up too early. So we'll see what they say. See what they say. But yeah, B&Q's all the way around there. We've got to go all the way around the service road. I was thinking about parking up here. It's a good job I didn't let us double reds. Cool, cool, cool. But yes, the range is on the right-hand side. And it used to be that we'd park up on the right and uh, they would offload us on the road. Da -da -da -da. Basically where that van is, that is the range. I think I've also been down here for B&M as well, I think. I've been here for a few places. Like I said, there's a few different companies down here. I delivered to a few of them, but I don't think I've done B&Q. We've got to be careful because we don't want to go too far then realise that we can't spin around. I think we might have to spin around here and then reverse back. Uh, let's just get a, a better look. Only because there's another truck here, I'm, I've decided to just drive down. Because I reckon we can probably just reverse back out if need be. But, um, yeah, well, we're here at least. So, uh, yeah. Let's go and um, ring the buzzer, tell them we're here, see what they say. Like I said, we have to move back, we move back, but at least we're here. But I can see us being here a while, to be honest with you. The Essential New Truckers Handbook is a book aimed at new drivers who want to become part of the industry. This book will guide you through what to expect in the industry via its 28 chapters and will help you understand important rules and regulations such as driver's hours, loading and unloading, manoeuvring and much more. This book also contains DVSA revision theory test questions and is a great read should you wish to gain some extra knowledge. The Essential New Truckers Handbook, updated and enlarged, available now. Link is in the description down below. Right, we're at the gate. There's a number there to call. I've just called it, and uh, would you believe no one's answering? Like I said, we've got, we got a truck next to me, and obviously I'm parked over here. I think we're going to be here a while. I think no one's going to answer. But I'll try again in a minute, but for now, I'll show you the load. So, uh, yes, yeah, so we've got these. It's like blocks, basically. Paving slabs is essentially what it all is. It's all, uh, well, it's mostly corner boarded except for three pallets because. Well, I ran out, did what I could do. But uh, yeah, that's what we've got on, bricks there. Yeah, bricks on the back, paving slabs for the rest of it. So uh, we'll get it unstrapped in a second. I'm just gonna call this number one last time. Oh, actually, I think I just heard someone. Yeah, there's someone over there now. He's walking to the gate. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back over and see him. Let's go and speak to him. What about you, right? Got a delivery from Aggregate Industries. Right, no uh, the chap's up there taking another lorry at the minute, so once he's out, he'll be straight in, alright? Uh, drive in, is it? Yeah, yeah, there's another turn and circle up the top end. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah, alright, mate. No um, I'll get, give you a shout, alright? Yeah, no worries, mate. I'll, um, I'll start unstrapping anyway. Alright, thank you. Okay, that lorry in front of me has now been let in. I've just spoken to the guy. When another lorry comes out, I think uh, they're going to come and see me and let me in. I've just remembered, I have delivered to this B&Q store as well. Uh, there's no point spinning around because we've got to drive in, drive all the way around the building, all the way around, and there's another turning circle. 
think it's quite tight, but there is another turning circle. So, uh, yeah, we're off public road now, so I'm going to unstrap where I am. And then, uh, I think so when we, when we get there, we can just, well, we're ready to be offloaded then, aren't we? So let's get this unstrapped. But edit like mad, though, how, like, you deliver to so many places, you sort of lose track sometimes of which ones you've been to. They look familiar, but they're not familiar. And they're like, oh, yeah, I have delivered to that one. <laughs> I mean, I've lost, I've lost count of how many places I've delivered to, it's countless, hundreds, thousands, thousands. Sometimes you come to places like this, different times with different companies and yeah, you just, you lose track. But yes, I've definitely been here before and I've actually definitely tipped at this being cute before. Right, let's grab all these corner boards. Go and put these away. You might be able to see it's a bit crusty in here. I need to have a thing out really. It's the ad blue. It's, um, yeah, it's leaked a little bit. Right, that's corner boards done. Right, now we just need to uh, roll up the straps. Get me trusty strap winder. Honestly, I know I say it in every video, but I would not want to work without this strap winder. <laughs> Okay, straps are off. To be honest, I took my time doing that. We were, we're not in a rush, so we're all ready to go. When the trucks come on out, we we go on in. I guess we're just going to sit in the truck now. Uh, so the truck that was in front of me, I think he's done now. It's a Trade Point um, truck, so it's one of theirs, isn't it? Oh, just got another one of theirs pulled up behind me. Yeah, it's def that's definitely a B and Q truck <laughs> so it'd be interesting to see now whether they cut in front would not put it past them we do know where we're going from here we're going uh straight back to be right sawmill to get loaded for wednesday so it's going to be over here there we go that one there so we'll get that in the sat nav ready to go we need to get fuel on the way back as well so we'll probably we'll probably stop at lee delamere services to get some fuel and then we'll probably go back to back roads as well so we're probably going to come off here and go up here but um lee de la mer i have to stop just so uh, i remember because we need to get fuel i've just pulled forward ever so slightly to show my intention of uh not cutting in front because that he could have quite easily have just pulled into where i was in front of me so now i've pulled in wait for him to come out and then yeah we gotta go all the way around to the back yeah i gotta be careful what i film uh, but the truck that was in front of me is now spinning around and turning back out. Going back out. No, he's not. He's parking up. That does make sense because he's not strapped up. <laughs> We've got two rigids about to pull out as well. I'm giving eye contact to the guy, but he's not looking at me back, so I'm going to assume that it is a new. Oh, I think he's calling the truck in behind me. Yeah. I knew that was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's the uh, the politest way of saying, no thank you, not today, as they can. They close the gates up now. <laughs> yeah, I just had a feeling that was going to happen. So they, yeah, they poured in one of their own trucks behind me. So now I've got to wait even longer. We got here at eight o'clock. Uh, to be fair, it's only half eight. It's only half eight. But I can see them taking a while to tip me in there because there's a lot of lifts and their forklifts aren't the quickest if I remember rightly. Never mind. Not a lot we can do about it. Not a lot we can do. We just sit and we wait and we go in when we can, innit? Well, it's now 10 past nine. Been here well over an hour and uh, we're still waiting outside. 
still waiting outside. Um, I phoned the number multiple times. No one is answering. There is a bloke there, and I can see him, and he can see me, so he knows I'm here waiting to come in. Um, there's no buzzer on the gate, and like I said, it's all the way around. I phoned the store. No one's answering. One bloke does know I'm here, and he said that um, I can go on in when another truck comes out. That truck that overtook me and went in, he hasn't come back out yet, so I'm a guess. I guess we're waiting for that. <laughs> but yeah, we've been here a lot longer than um, I think we planned to be. Oh, <laughs> 10 o'clock. We turned up just before eight. We've been here for two hours. Oh, we have movement. That truck is an Arctic. That ain't, that ain't come in since I've been here, so he's been in there since I arrived. <laughs> right, so yeah, we're just waiting for that gate now to be open. There's a Fort Lift approaching. I'm just waiting for like a thumbs up or something to say I can go on in. All right, thumbs up. Two hours and 10 minutes, man. The van has decided to follow me in. Where are you going, mate? Yeah, no, where are you going? Where are you going? Okay, I can't go anywhere until you go back a sec. Can you, yeah, can you go back? The van driver's decided to follow me in and as I'm spinning round, he's come right up to me. Yeah, I just need him to go back so I can get a different angle. Literally asked him to go back and he's not gone back. I asked the van driver to go back. Sorry, I got a bit, I got a bit stressy then. I asked the van driver to go back, but he didn't go back. Is that right? Yeah, I was just trying to, just trying to spin round, and uh, the van driver decided to get right up to my nose where I needed to be to get the right angle to be able to go back again straight. Yeah, I do, mate. Yeah, it's uh, two coppers there. All of them. All of them. How many's on there? Thirty-eight. Something like that. I never counted it. Sorry. I um get a bit. I get a bit stressful when um when you've been waiting for ages to be let into places, and then you finally get let in, and then you get <laughs> a van driver who decides to just get in your way and even after you tell him to move backwards so you can complete your maneuver he doesn't move backwards you have to wait for someone else to tell him um yeah wound me up a little bit not gonna lie anyway we're in Let's see how long we're in here for right it looks like we are just about tipped i think he's taken the last one off um it's 20 to 11 so we've been here for two hours and 40 minutes um i thought actually we'd be inside for a little bit longer but looks like we're nearly done so i don't think i've actually said yet so from here we've got to go straight back to the sawmill yeah i think i did actually i did say that straight back to the sawmill and then we've got to go to i think it's wensbury so um hmm. so, <laughs> i'm not entirely sure if we're going to get that off today um timings are going to be awkward because it's going to be oh, uh, just under two hours to get back no it shouldn't take just under two hours we see what we'll have to see what driving time we got. Um, by the time we get back to the sawmill, could be about an hour and a half. So we've got to get through Bristol City Centre yet. Um, so I think it'll be about an hour and a half. So as long as we get to Wednesday within three hours, which I'm pretty sure we can, we won't need to stop for a break. But yeah, I don't know. We'll just see what we can do. See what we can do. Wow. So there are two Arctics outside waiting to be let in. 
two Arctics. <laughs> it's now 11 o'clock. Um, so we've been here for exactly three hours. Three hours. Forklift driver's coming down the left side. <laughs> to be fair, we've only been in here for like 45 minutes. We've only been inside being tipped for 45 minutes. It's just the fact that we were outside for two hours and 15 minutes. That's, uh, that's the mick. That's what take the mick. I said to him, I said, finally tipped. Cheers, mate. I said to him, I was like, we got there in the end. <laughs> he laughed. You gotta laugh. It's not his fault. It's not the uh, the loader's fault. Well, maybe it is. I don't know. But never mind. Lovely day today. Well, I mean, it's only twelve degrees. So it's not like the warmest, but it's uh, weather-wise, it's uh, yeah, quite a nice day. Quite a nice day. So yeah, we've got to go back to Sawmill now. We won't be there until well. Depends because well, it depends on which way we go, but it's going to be well after twelve o'clock. That's for sure. We we're going to be at Lee LMS Services for about ten to twelve, so we probably won't leave there until for, uh, twelve o'clock at Lee LMS Services, and then we go to the sawmill, the back roads. So maybe maybe half twelve ish. We should be at the sawmill. We could be there till half past one ish, two half past three. So it gives us two and a half hours to get to Wensbury before four o'clock. Which is possible, I think, but it could be tight. It could be tight, um, which is annoying because I, well, I don't know, but I may have been home tonight. But um, I definitely won't be home now. I'm pretty sure. By the way, you may be able to hear some rattling. <laughs> you may be able to hear some beers, beer bottles rattling in the passenger seat. That's for um, that's for someone. In fact. I'll be dropping off to him at the sawmill, so. Uh, right, let's turn right here. I can't remember if we go under the bridge or not. We have to, remember we had to go um, up to the roundabout, turn around and come back down. No, no, we can just go left here. We can just go left. Yeah, so I wasn't sure whether we had to go under the bridge or not. Which we can. We uh, we're not that big. Let's go lift. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So now we've just got to make our way back through Bristol again and get to the M32. Okay, time for some fuel. Yeah, it's a weird one because it's quite sunny, but it's, it is also quite chilly. <laughs> Uh, I'm in shorts and t-shirt and I kind of wish I had a hoodie on right now. A bit chilly. Yeah, put the hoodie on. It's too cold. Oh, oh that's much better. <laughs> so, what do I think we're going to get in today? Normally I like to guess. We've got just under a quarter of a tank, so I reckon 360, something like that. About 360. Okay. 360. Oh my god, the funniest thing goes on. <laughs> and the toilets. These are very small toilets. I come in and there's a man washing here. It's very small. He blocks me. He was here, stopping me from coming in any further. So I'm just stood here. Like, when you're ready, mate. He walked out, and then his wife walked out. <laughs> so I wish I could tell you I was joking. Like a 70 year old woman just walked out of the men's toilets with her husband. <laughs> anyway, I need some water. Do -do -do -do. Grab two. Yeah, so uh, before I go, I'll just explain again what happened. So I walked into the men's toilets. It's very small toilets. One cubicle, one urinal. It's difficult for two skinny people to pass, let alone a bloke my size. And there was this bloke washing his hands. Older bloke. Said, all right. He goes, yeah, all right. 
and he stopped me from going any further. It's like, all right, I'll let you wash your hands, then you can go. He washed his hands, and then he, he continued blocking me. I was like, can I pop to the urinal? He goes, yeah, one sec, I'm just waiting for, the, waiting for her to come out. So what? And then this woman walked out, <laughs> elderly lady walked out of the men's um, cubicle. I was like, right, okay, cool. So you go, I can still have a wee, <laughs> needed a wee. Anyway, um, we filled up a fuel, 360 litres, let's crack onto the sawmill, see you there. Right, we are now in the sawmill. I don't actually know where, what place we're going to yet. I just had a quick Google. There is a place called, I think it's National Timber. And it's right opposite West Brom Football Club. It's on a red route as well, double red line. So it's one of them places where I think I'm gonna have to call them when I'm on my way, just to say, look, I'll be there. Cause it's an hour and a half away from here. And just double check with them what I do. So I think there's just enough room for me to drive straight in and get off the road. Well, I might have to reverse it. But we'll see. I need to find out for sure if that is actually where we're going. Right, we are fully loaded. I'm just strapping up and uh, feel hot again now. I wish I didn't have the hoodie on. <laughs> Right, fully loaded, fully strapped. I need a haircut, man. <laughs> Let me show you the load. So, this is what we've got on today. Just gonna get a slightly different angle for the thumbnail. There we go. So, uh, yeah. Five straps going along those ones, double strap these ones, and then all on the back end. Let's go grab our paperwork. We've got 24 packs in table. And then, uh, so yeah, grab our paperwork and then I want to quickly pop to the toilet. And let's jump in the truck. Okay, you join me in Wednesbury. We're about two miles away from uh, the delivery points. Now, current ETA is in five minutes time, which will put the time, well, it's three o'clock now. So um, five past three is when we're going to be rocking up. Google says they close at half past three. So what are they to us? That is the question. I mean, it won't take long. If they pull their finger out, it won't take long to tip us. Uh, I'll get the straps off in five, 10 minutes, tops. Five minutes. Let me undo the ratchets and then I can do the straps up while they're offloading me. So like, it'd take me five minutes. So take, say it takes five minutes to get to the area where we've got to unload, that's 10 past. Five minutes to do the ratchets, quarter past. They can easily get it all off in 15 minutes if they really wanted to. But do they want to? That is the question. Second question is, if they say no, where the hell are we going to park up tonight? <laughs> that is the question. So I'm trying to look out for like areas nearby that I could park. So far, it's just been dual carriageways. There's a, there's a chance we might be able to park up outside the place. Double yellow's all down there. But I'm not 100% sure. I won't know until we actually get there. <laughs> all three of those cars just cut across. Okie dokie, turn left down here, then it's an immediate right. Got a shop there. Yeah, there are houses here, but might be able to park on the other side of the road. That's a bus stop, so we can't park there. Yeah, there's a trailer out here, look. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'd park out here if I had to. Hopefully we ain't got to. That lorry was parking the uh, DPT trailer there. But, oh yeah, we could park down here if we had to, as long as no one else parks here before we do. Nickel, Nickelin Transit Packaging. Um, there's some timber down here, so we're gonna we're gonna pop down here to the timber. Goods inward, turn left. We're going to see what they say about a delivery. I'm going to assume it's in here. Might be able to park in this car park. See what they say. Fits inward. Is it literally there? Might be there on that bend.
I'm pretty sure it was there on that bend. We need to park in such a way that we don't block anyone. Just going to reverse back into this car park. See if we can get anyone's attention. So I've got a funny feeling we've got to drive in. That gate's all locked up. I'm just going to park up here a second. I reckon I could park up in here if I have to. That gate is locked. That's where we don't want to go. So I need to go and shout at someone. Shutters open. Got to be quick. See you in a bit. weren't answering their phone earlier either. Literally climbing up on the fence. Okay. Coming there, nice Someone's coming, yeah? yeah? Brilliant. Cheers, mate. Right, <sighs> Literally just had to climb up on a fence to shout and get someone's attention. <laughs> I have a feeling they're not going to tip me. Just, just got a feeling they're not going to tip me. What's that sign say? One way. I reckon we might be able to stay in this car park if we absolutely have to. I don't want to get woken up in the night and kicked out. We sort of just parked here at the moment. What I probably would do is move over to the other side. The issue is, yeah, I'd move over to the other side and then I might have to block the pedestrian crossing do part there because the trouble is on this side there's an island and to get into the car park I'll have to go over the island so it'll be one of the two but I could just park up along that fence down there hello mate you right? yeah not bad No what time do you close? Half past three. So you won't tip me? No, because it's no, no pay for me overtime. Yeah, what time in the morning? Uh, seven o'clock. Seven o'clock? Can I stay there? Yeah, it's no problem. Yeah. But it's really, if, if pay overtime, I stay. Yeah. It's no problem. But... All right, no worries. I'll, um, I'll be in the morning then if you say no, that, then okay, that's so it. Seven o'clock, no problem. Yeah, all right, mate. All right, all right cheers. Yeah, so. Um... So I just played back that clip where I was talking to the bloke and um, I'd come across a little bit rude. <laughs> I was smiling. I was smiling at, while I was saying these things. So hopefully it didn't come across rude to him. But like I said, he, uh, he's not getting paid for overtime. So that's fair enough. I don't want to stay late if I don't want, if I don't have to. That's fair enough. So question is now, where do we park? I'm thinking actually I might go onto the main road and park up there. I know it will be quieter here where I am, but I don't know if I've got permission he said it's fine to stay here, but is it fine to stay here? Someone's going to own this estate. There's cameras all over the place. And like I said, I don't want to be getting woken up at like, well, even in a couple of hours time, I don't want to be asked to move and then it's all not clear out there. So I think I'm going to go out onto the main road, park up there because there's plenty of space. At least then I'm on public road and I can't be asked to move. So that's what I'm going to do. Right, we're now parked up outside on the public road and it's just just started to rain as well so we're going to jump in the truck quickly without getting killed. Right, we're inside, it's starting to rain. Like I said, it's all right him saying I could park in there but it's owned and managed by LCP. They might have their own security guards. They probably do have their own security guards. And if I'm parked in that random bit of car park, you know, I might very well get a, can you please move? So I would rather not risk it and just park out outside on the main road. I'm out of the way. Vehicles can pass me two at a time where I am. You know, like case in point, like there's a lorry there taking a very wide turn, taking up all the road to be honest. But if they really wanted to, that lorry and a car could squeeze past each other, no problem. It is going to be noisier where I am, admittedly. 
but there's also no jurisdiction for anyone to tell me to move. Um, there's no there's no lines, there's no signs. I've had a look around to see if there's any signs saying private, nothing at all. There's other trucks and trailers parked as well. So as far as I'm concerned, this is the better place to park. Yeah, no wonder they wanted, they didn't want to stay on. Look at this. It's half 11, it's like everyone's swarming out. <laughs> I reckon it might be home time. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the industry I picked. Um, I don't get to go home and see my wife and kids today. Get the little violins out. I mean, if this got tipped off, there was a chance I could have uh, come back to the yard and be home today, but what can you do? Do you know what I've just noticed? No unauthorized parking on this estate. Strictly, was that tenant parking only? Yeah, good call. Good call, Luke. Good call. Good morning. It is the next day. We're back in that car park where we was yesterday. And um, we're gonna get the straps off. It is quarter to seven. So we're here 15 minutes before they said to get here. So I thought I'd get in, get the straps off, get them ready to go. And then come seven o'clock, we're ready to go in. Not that I think they'll be ready for seven o'clock. I don't think we're gonna get let in until after seven, to be honest. But at least I've done everything I can do to ensure that uh, we're here and we're ready. So yeah, let's get these straps off. Right, nearly done. I'll tell you what, it must've been cold last night because some of these straps are frozen. So it must've been cold last night see the frost on them <laughs> to be honest it's pretty cold now i'm in shorts and t-shirt and uh, it's pretty apparently right now it's two degrees celsius yeah i am a little bit cold to be honest <laughs> well, we've got a lorry that's one of their own lorries a rigid i had one of their arctics come up to me yesterday where i was parked up last night and he said oh you can go in if you want and park up in here basically where I am now. I said that's right. I'm here now, parked up, so what can you do? Right. Straps off. We're ready to go in. As soon as they call us in. Like yesterday, the weather's really nice but <sighs> really quite cold. So as soon as they're ready for us, we'll drive on in. Just gotta drive in there. It looks like drive in, get tip and then reverse back out. Drive back out there. I noticed there's some toilets here as I was coming in. They're probably locked. Of course they're going to be locked. Toilet. Yeah, it's locked. That was obvious. Why, why would the toilet be unlocked? <laughs> right, I'm going to go wait in the truck because uh, it's getting cold. Okay, 7.01. As expected. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're getting into at least five or ten past. And that's because if they're anything like yesterday, they all clocked off as soon as it got to half past three. I'm going to assume they don't get in until seven. So, you know, by the time they walk to the back of the warehouse and get the forklift and open some shutters, stuff like that, I ain't getting in at seven bang on seven, am I? It's going to be more like five past, ten past. That's what I think anyway. But uh, yeah, we wait. <laughs> Oh, we got movement. We got movement. Yeah, boy. Right, we are in. But he did just say, give me 10 minutes. I need to print some labels. So, we might not be offloaded for another 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, to be fair, it is five past seven. So, I was pretty accurate with saying it'd be five past, wouldn't I? Five past. So, I reckon hopefully around about quarter past, they start tipping me. And hopefully we're out of your way before eight o'clock. Fingers crossed. We'll see. Okay, so situation update. It is now five to eight. And uh, we're, well, we're still here. <laughs> um, it's one of them. I kind of expected me to still be here. Let's change that to white. Yeah, I kind of expected that I'd still be here at this time. Um, I think they've just finished one side. And the driver's side is nearly finished. So, uh, 
we're getting there we're getting there but um i'll end the video here because that this is going to be the end of the video anyway so thank you very much for watching i do appreciate it obviously yesterday we were in bristol at the b and q store unfortunately it took three hours for us to get tipped there it's been one of those 24 hour periods where no matter what i've done where i've gone um we've just been held up at every opportunity we've we've had basically so yeah not not the best 24 hours but what can you do you know you turn up to these places and you're at their peril you know you get tipped when they can tip you um it's just how it is sometimes but yeah if you get held up at one place very often yeah, then push you behind for the rest of the week and then you're just playing catch up so yeah but I've had issues with B&Q before where they take ages to tip you. It's just, it's just them. It's not just them, it's other places as well, like, um, uh, what's the other garden centre? Builders Merchant's place. Not too soon, the other one. Anyway, so yeah, that's gonna be the end of today's video. Thank you very much for watching, I do appreciate it. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Sorry that it's been a bit, um, sort of waiting, waiting, but hopefully you've enjoyed it nonetheless. Thank you very much for watching, I do appreciate it. Until next time, drive safe, stay safe, and I will see you soon. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you're still watching to this point, I imagine you're already subscribed, but hit the subscribe button. It really does help me out. Thank you, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.